Hi guys, and welcome to a new video uh, for the Patreon. In this case, we're with uh, two special guests that came here to make a private coaching course. Um, this is Jamie from Mini Matters, yeah. and this is Lionel from Mini Matters. Hi, Hansa, thanks for having us. My pleasure. So, guys, this will be a very special uh, video because I'm going to make uh, something that I used to do in all my or most of my courses, uh, which is a 90 minute demo. Uh, with uh, with an anonymous bust. In this case, it won't be my anonymous bust. It will be a miniature that has been released by Beyond Miniatures, which uh, it's a, is a kind of anonymous bust, but uh, from 2020 or 2019. So it's a it's a beautiful bust sculpted by Raúl García La Torre, and I think it's a fantastic surface to to practice. So with this video, we're also welcoming uh, Beyond Miniatures to participate on the on the content of the. Of the Patreon and these guys that are studying, uh, studying with us uh, this during this week, the full week, they're they're studying with us or they're studying with me. Uh, they will be asking questions, and if in any moment you have something to ask, this will be brilliant, I think, for the crowd, for the viewers, uh, because they will then they may have the same kind of questions probably. So I think that you're like lucky students in a in a way because you can be in the process inside of the process and, and you will be able to see about the density, about the dilution because most of the times I really, sometimes I'm a little bit lost to know which things could be important for you yeah. as, as members of the Patreon, as viewers, mm -hmm. uh, to know which things could be more interesting to explain. So at any moment, if uh, there's something that you want me to re-explain, you want me to go slower, if you want to me to to I don't know, explain any mixture or any color or whatever, mm -hmm. that, that's an option. Maybe it will make the video slightly longer than 90 minutes, but the idea is to have a, a video that won't be edited, that will be all at one, you know, all at once. That's it. That's it. Yes. So no swear. Yeah. Right? Looking forward to learning. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. So let's go. Okay, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is to apply the colors. There are <coughs> several ways to apply the colors. You have seen some of them like in the Ogre Bust. You remember the Ogre Bust? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, that I applied it like very randomly to create um, tonal variations from the very beginning. You can be more structurized like the Gladiator video where everything is uh, divided like in tiles, in panels, you know? Yeah. Uh, which is a cell shading technique. You can do a grisale, which is this black and white pre sketch that is, as I've said many times, is a medieval technique. It comes from the uh, uh, low relief sculpts. Right, which is a is a way to sketch something to to understand the volume first without being affected by colors, right? Or we can do like a normal pre sketch with base coats, which is called tapa base, which means basically a thicker version of the color applied to have full coverage, yeah. right? I don't know exactly how I'm going to to to, to tackle this uh, this figure right now because it's the first time I painted. But the 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 first thing I, I want to do now is covering. This has been prime in black, right? So black is a perfect surface, it's a, perf it's a perfect base coat to uh, cover completely. Uh, in case that I, wa uh, I was uh, starting with, uh, with a grisale or with a double spray, you know, like black and white, but this is basically a grisale. A grisale would be like a more ev evolved, evolved version of this double uh, base coat, right? Uh, then I, I, I could start with filtering because that makes sense. The volume is already somehow created with airbrush or, or, or spray. But in this case, I have no volumes created. So I have to create them my, uh, from, from the very beginning. And that's the reason why uh, I'm going to first base coat it with a, with a regular skin tone. Do you want me to make a skin tone myself or do you want me to start with pre-made mixtures? I would prefer you to make it. You want to make? You yeah. Jamie, okay. Yeah, not so not we will start we will start with a yellow, we will start with a blue, and we will start with a, uh, with a red, right? So let's start some yellow with some regular red. In this case, yellow is a primary yellow from Scale 75, Scale Color Artist. It's an aero color, brilliant red. Try not to move too much. Mm. Uh, no, the, don't don't show this. Yeah, there. Maybe. Yeah. Too bad. 
Okay, so I will add another yellow. In this case, it's a warm yellow, you see. This is a cold yellow or a neutral yellow. This is a warm yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Differences, you see differences? Yeah. And then I have too many inks. This, this, this is a blue ink, I'm gonna place it here. This is a blue ink, but I can take maybe this light. What do you mean you have too many inks to choose from or? Yeah, what I mean is that now I'm searching for vis different viscosities and this is an ink, this is an ink, this is an ink. Mm. So I need some heavy body could be a fluid color, like for example, Chimera or Vallejo, those are fluids. Um, but I prefer to make my own fluid with a mixture of both. Well, this is a preference. Uh, it doesn't mean that I do always the same. It just means that I, I can do this, right? So for example, I have this, this super, uh, well, there's a, indeed there's another way to, to, to start, that is a Verdaccio, which is a Renaissance technique that starts with green but this will be for another episode okay this is another this is another uh, another way this is it's quite interesting i have the green i and then i add this red and then i have a mahogany right and this is this is skin tone uh, mm. i wouldn't right. have said but yeah for, for, for people who are starting off is there a particular order you recommend that they add the colors yeah uh always starts with yellow then red, then blue, because yellow is the weakest, is the easy, the, the, the one that gets affected easier. Mm -hmm. I have the perfect base for a skin tone and then I just add red on it. This is a way to do it. The order doesn't matter too much if you control. I'm just creating different kinds of, of flesh tones. Depending on your screen, you will see it more or less salmony, orangey, whatever, you know? But, well, basically, if you can give me one of these papers. Basically, with this, we have, I don't know, it looks like what? Like elf skin tone, yeah. right? Mm. Or dwarf skin tone. Yeah. My skin tone. <laughs> <laughs> Your skin tone. <laughs> Something more reddish for some, we call it ca carnaciones, which is uh, where the, the, the areas of the flesh where you receive more uh, veins and where blood mm -hmm. concentrate. Somebody likes so you can, you can easily do several tones that can be a skin tone at some point because that could be easily a shadow or, or, or st stubble, for example, you know, so all these colors will belong to faces quite easily, right? Okay, so you see that I have quickly created uh, some of them, just by interaction between colors, you will find uh, many different tonalities that you can apply. So we're gonna stick to one first for the, for the base coat, but all these tones belongs to skin tones, basically, right? Most of the people, they think that skin tone is only these ones that are the more recognizable ones, mm -hmm. but this can be easier, easily, um, very easy, it could be uh, at the shadow of a, of, or a mid-tone even, right? Or a, or a place where, as I've said, you receive more amount of blood, let's say. Is this clear, mm -hmm. Jamie? Yeah. In case that, for example, Jamie has a tendency to go Name very, shame. very yellowish, like this. My, all my people are kissed by the sun, so... Jamie <laughs> has this problem. Yeah. Jamie used to go very yellowish. Uh, this could be because you had a lot of yellow. This could be because your yellow is very intense. In this case that you were playing right. before, it was Chimera color. Chimera color has a fantastic uh, yellow pigment. It's too strong. It affects too much the, the mixtures. So what we're going to do is to first balance the, the mixture. And then uh, it, it's a way to, to make it co more corrupted with his opposite color which will be in this case purple mm -hmm. right that you can make it with red and, and blue or directly purple from a pot so then you the neutralize you control it you balance and then you add white or black to add it to, to make it darker or brighter but then you get a, a skin tone is this clear yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. so uh, we have this and imagine that we want to 
control. You can do uh, purple by your own, or you can take it directly from a from a pot. In this the, case, these we are using that violet. Sorry, scale artists are a lot thicker than I thought they'd be. Yeah, they are heavy bodies. Yeah, but are they? They feel more heavy body than heavy body. Do you know well, what I mean? no, they are heavy bodies. There, there are different kinds of heavy bodies. Some of them are yeah. thicker, lighter, more translucent, more, more opaque. Mm -hmm. These ones are very opaque. Check this. This could be a good base coat for. This could be a good base coat for a tan flesh. Because mm -hmm. I, I was wondering, these paints to me look very opaque. Means transparent, right? Opaque means not transparent. Shit! I've been buying all the wrong paints. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Anyway, so if I add uh, white to, to this mixture, you see how I'm correcting this? Mm -hmm. Check. I have a skin tone right now. You see? Mm. Okay, guys, so as you can see right now, how, how is the bust? Uh, it's still wet. Can you check that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still wet, right? So that means that we can make a wet blending technique directly. We could either cover and for this density helps obviously uh, and, and paint with good coverage helps so we can make several layers but what I'm doing is it's, it's a technique that is similar to this um, how is it the, the um, wet blending that Ben Comets does the, uh, loaded brush. the loaded brush it's similar to the loaded brush but at the end you can have paint here and then you take paint from any other at the same time and then you mix it all together, you know? It's similar to this. This is with heavy bodies though. It's, it's, it's with heavy bodies, it's, it's much easier. In this case, I'm just, I'm just going to, to cover, but I'm going to cover considering that the front part of the head will receive more light. So I'm gonna go quickly and I'm going to stop speaking that much. And then if you have any questions, you ask me, okay? We shouldn't talk amongst ourselves, though, should we? Well, you can you can talk if it's related to the figures, <laughs> with with the, with, the, with the process itself, because this is a video for patrons. When you um, started, Alfon not Alfonso, Lionel, when you came in, how good was your skin? <laughs> not, <laughs> not very good. It's, it's Even from two days, yeah. Oh, from here. Yeah, yeah. Doing this, no, it, it, it's a lot better now. Yeah. Um, Just from seeing Alfonso and laying it out, right? Yeah. I think this. I think this is very but it's important. also, I think the explanations what helped me, or what were helping me was, well, I can't do English, obviously I put too much yellow, mm. but also the counter colours that you put in to, to make it more to a brown and then use the black or white to lighten or darken. Mm. I still... How big would you recommend your mix being, Alfonso, when you do, when you do this? Uh, mixtures should be really big. The, the bigger they are, the, the better they, 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 will, they will be because then you have much more chances to, uh, to play around and this will not uh, get dry so quickly. So the main problem of many people is that they leave the, the paint very shallow, right? Yeah. So as soon as they are going to pick it again, and that's why I, I, I change viscosities and I always add a little bit of heavy body because heavy body takes m more time to dry, the same as inks, they, they take longer to dry mm -hmm. and if, if, indeed if i leave this until tomorrow probably some of them will will be still alive yeah. while if it's a regular color it will be completely dry and it will be completely flattened does that make sense yeah okay <coughs> we have made a few changes so that you can see also the questions in real time uh so we have added another another uh, camera another scene in it uh so well let's see if it works better please guys if you've feel that this is an interesting content where you know that we are always trying to provide new content, new ways of teaching, new ways of explaining. Somehow I think it's, it's an interesting connection between people that are watching uh, live, watching live? Live. live, yeah, watching live, watching live this, this demo and you that are watching it there, that they can ask questions that maybe you might uh, need to have resolved uh, for yourself. I think it's a good idea, I think it's a good kind of video, it's one of at least, I don't know, six, seven, ten different kind of videos that we are actually producing. So if you like this, this idea, if you, want, if you like this style of videos, tell me because I can make 
more things like this and I think it could be more interactive between uh, between you and us because they are like a representation of of your questions because they are students as well at the end so well, let's see if it works uh, so from now don't don't remove you know don't clean your nose or whatever <laughs> don't be naked because they will they're going to be to I see that okay? I didn't think I could get a, no I don't record <laughs> You can be naked if you want, but yeah, then, well, then, you can, you, then you cannot show the logo. This is what I mean. You, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so as you see, the, the, the flesh is already, it, it has passed a few minutes, and the flesh is already dry, and maybe we need a second layer. This is a base coat. Obviously, if you apply it thicker, maybe you don't need two layers, but well, I don't think it's a big issue. As you see, how it sounds, guys. How it sounds. It's Rough. Patchy. It's like a really soft uh, sandpaper. Yeah. Why? Because the uh, mixture is getting dry or drying out. Okay. Exactly. When you start listening, especially when you attack the, the surface so hard, uh, and if it sounds, it means that your paint is, or either is sand, sandy, you know, like chalky, like Yosonja paints, Scale 75, Reaper paints, things like that. Th these are chalky paints. They used to have better coverage, but at the same time, uh, they, they leave this dry feeling all over the, the, the surface. That means that somehow you need to recover uh, more fluidity. But, you know, I'm taking advantage of the mixtures that are already done. So before they dry, because it, it has passed like 15 minutes, uh, since I stopped the video um, then this is what is happening we need to keep the mixtures alive the more time the the longer time we can make sense yeah in the beginning when you showed your colors there's obviously a variety of blues yellows or reds can this concept or this approach work with any type of red blue or is it important which ones you pick it's not important but it definitely varies what you will get so if you change the red you will have a different brown obviously mm. the thing is that browns are all, all belong to the same family it's like it's not like like primary colors and secondary colors they have a strong personality while browns they have like mixed personalities it's like normal people like us you know like you can find reddish browns but they are not pure red. You can have green, green browns, but they are not pure green. You can, you, you understand? Yeah. So the point is that all of them belong to the same family and they are quite similar to each other. So obviously there are differences if you change the, the primaries. And indeed it's something that I, I suggest to do sometimes, you know, when you see that all your colors are going to the same direction, it's good to change, but don't be obsessed by that because at the end you can arrive to almost the same point uh, with almost any primaries. So it's true that it changes, that it affects. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, of tertiary of creating tertiary colors, you can get almost anything, you know, with, with the main primary colors. The truth is, and I'm gonna show you on the palette, uh, the truth is that if you if I mix this the resultant color will be more grayish and with a with a brighter value than if I use this. Indeed, you see how it affects much more because the pigment on this is stronger, mm. right? So if I want a darker brown, I will use a darker blue as well. You see the difference? So this has a more purple uh, tendency because the blue uh, is stronger yeah. than, than this one. So it's more a matter of the, the strength of the pigment, let's say. I don't know if I've, I've explained this well. Yes, yeah, so I, I suppose the point I'm trying to make is you can't fail from selecting the No, no, you, you cannot fail. You can only fail with method. You can, you can succeed more, yeah. but not fail. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that we could do right now is start planning the start sketching planes of shadow in this case i will 
you can even do it like wet blending if you see mm -hmm. this is a wet blending technique where you apply the dark color quickly this will be all my lateral side because it's a lateral side and we're understanding this as a box to rescue the school these both sides will be darker and because the paint is alive because I have reactivated it you know I have do it again basically all these two lateral sides will receive less light but you see that the paint is still alive mm. so I am doing a wet blending already I can apply a brighter color on the top and on the top or at the top on the top, on the top. mix I, I don't need perfection right now mm. I just need to start seeing something indeed I put this down to be able now to create to create a bright skin tone check Jamie a lot of yellow I really like Already still what? yellow more yellow because we love yellow oh. we are the Simpsons and we need what? What we need here, guys? What, you're trying to create a brown? No, I'm trying to create a bright skin tone. Just a red, yeah, obviously. Red. red. Yeah. red let's, let's use this. It's a magenta, which is a kind of red. A kind red, of blue. red. That's definitely right. It's purpley. Is that what magenta is? Mm -hmm. No. I didn't go to school. Oh, my God. Skin tone, you see? <laughs> it appears. Skin tone. The reason why my, um, well, or one of the main reasons why the pieces, they look consistent and they look that they belong to the same is because I constantly mix mm. on my on top of my palette, so all the colors are related. Mm. You understand? So now because I'm using this thick body, these heavy body colors, I can easily use the, the, the surface that is still slightly wet to create a wet blending. In terms of the guide, you have a previous video that David did, didn't you, showing where the planes of the face were, where you could place your lights and your shadows. the problem with with those videos is like you can you can make a you can explain in a video where normally you have to place the light on the shadows as a rule mm. for let's say beginners or intermediate painters mm. but if you want to make something complex you cannot say this is where light goes because it depends on the light situations like the the light changes as you see in my face mm. it changes constantly depending on what is the light source and how I move the face basically right mm -hmm. so telling the student that there is one way to highlight is bullshit is is lying basically mm -hmm. I can tell you this is the most common way to highlight something right yeah I want you to see that my process of wet blending right now is quite quick mm -hmm. and I am achieving volumes and connecting volumes did I answer you or what was your question? I missed. No, just in terms of <coughs> for students who are obviously on Patreon, you have released a video before showing a breakdown of the face, where lights are more likely to be, which would be a useful guide in conjunction yeah. with well, this. Well, it, it is is it, it is a useful guide, but I I like every video uh, is an another chapter to to learn something else but it's not or at least to me i don't conceive the videos as this is the way to paint because this will this, this will be very arrogant you know like this is the way to paint something no well this is the way to paint a frontal uh a frontal view of a face from a cenital perspective yeah. uh that is a classical way to paint in a miniature environment let's say but if you move to canvas and nowadays we are moving them to canvas more and more 
every day because we are becoming illustrators you just have to check like even uh, uh, um, Alejandro Prieto or or Arnau Lázaro or Aitami or Kirill mm. or well, all, all these guys uh, myself I started this many many years ago with with the people of Night Models as well that they were like the first box arts that were illustration style you know this is this is the trend right now this is where where it goes at the end is a reinterpretation so that means that planning or, or sketching or understanding only a frontal point of view and a cenital uh, source like it's not enough you know this this belongs to the past when people just uh, interpreted things in, in one view right now you can find an, a, a boxer like Arnaud Olafer is doing fantastic boxers with very creative uh, points of view. While, for example, there are some other painters that are masters that we all love, like Marmas Glanz, that he's more like traditional, you know, and his understanding of uh, volumes is more like a cynical uh, understanding. However, also there are variations. It's not always like this, mm. uh, but th this is more about styles and what do you want to represent? How do, do you want to represent? It's like choosing different, um, frames or or shoot frames what is it? like in a movie different shots shots different shots for something you know like you want to represent a, speci a specific character it could be from <coughs> here from here each each way represents something different is a different emotion is a different mood is a different risk is a different word at the end mm. so there's not one way to do it Jimmy, just your just life <laughs> yeah i just realized you've not got any water you're painting no. Oh, that's a good question. We were literally painting with no water. Oh, this is no water, yeah. It's risky, isn't it? No, well, I mean, uh, so that's, like the, that's the advantage of heavy body colors. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, ca you, cannot, you cannot, listen, you cannot buy things just because it's trendy. And this is what most people uh, do. Not you me. Know? I don't know like, we, we, we bought this, we buy uh, golden acrylic because we have seen that they use it. This happened in the past when they see our workbench in, in night models. So they are using golden acrylic. Oh, you will become a great artist if you use golden acrylic. Or then uh, the Korean people started to show Jo Sonja, uh, like uh, this uh, Sang Yeol Lee and, and this other guy, uh, Jason, Zhu, Jason Zhu, and you know, like in, in very interesting or very great painters. Uh, they were using Jo Sonja and suddenly people started to buy Jo Sonja. Now the contrast paints and everybody thinks that with contrast paint you are going to become a better artist. This is bullshit. This, this, this is, that's not true. It's like all is paint, you know, and then each paint has different properties. If you get to know which are these properties, uh, then you can move around and you can, you can try your own things, you know, uh, knowing which are the, the characteristics of uh, each paint. You know, the characteristic or the features of, of this paint is the viscosity. And also that even, the, it, even if it has not a lot of fluidity, it doesn't trace really well, uh, but that the viscosity uh, keep the paint away from getting dry quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So you can extend it like if it was oil, it's like an oil painting, very, very similar to oil painting. So basically you can extend your process a lot and it's like having a painting uh, retarder retarder yeah, uh, 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 like the, the this uh, material yeah. that you use for it slows it slows the drying process exactly yeah it's the same yeah but in this case without affecting the paint because i'm using pure paint basically right so well basically what i'm doing is creating a, a main uh, first sketch The only problem it has is that sometimes you will need. Oh, indeed, I don't have even. I don't even have water. So that's what I was saying. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Bring <laughs> <a little laughs> <bit of water? laughs> I forgot. Good times. But because it has such an interesting viscosity, we don't really need water until. Because it has such an interesting viscosity we can keep it keeping working for a while unless we dry and when we are happy with how the figure is going then is when we can dry or wait until it dries 
of drying is as simple as using a hair dryer. Basically, I'm resembling the, the school structure and treating it like if it was a, a, a box and a sphere. Thank you very much. So we already have something here. It's a little bit leathery. I really don't care because it can be, a, could be I don't know, it can be like South American guy. Who cares? Um, so 